Greetings and salutations, my great, great, great friends. Welcome to Friday video for the Your Best Year Ever series. Boy, that was quite a tongue twister. But we are going to go back to the shorter Friday videos. Once again, this is your best year ever. Once again, I ask you the question. If I could provide you with a magic button and you could hit it, and be the greatest version of yourself, would you do it? Of course the answer is yes. And that's the way you're going to have the best year ever. So I will admit, I do this drill with all of my coaching clients. I'll never forget the first time I even did it with Kaylee and she thought it was kind of morbid. I'll admit it is kind of morbid, but I learned this philosophy from one of the greatest teachers of all time. His name escapes me, but it's the idea of beginning with the end in mind. If you want to have the greatest year ever, if I called you up on the phone and I said, hey, Bill, haven't talked in a year, and you said, hey, John, it's been the greatest year ever, and I would say, well, tell me about it. And that's what I'm asking you to do in this video. If you want to have the greatest year ever, and I'm going to call you in a year, and you're going to tell me what it was, what would that look like? We call that beginning with the end in mind. One of my mentors in life was a great Australian gentleman named Matthew Kelly. He's very famous for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons he's famous is for a quote. And the quote reads something like this, who you become will be infinitely more important than anything you ever do or have. So, if you believe that to be true and you believe in that idea of beginning with the end in mind, that's what leads to this semi-morbid of a question. I want you, after this video goes off today, which is going to be in about 60 seconds, to actually imagine the person at your funeral reading your eulogy. They're going to talk about when you were born. Of course, everybody knows you're dead. They're going to be talking about the dash in the middle. Come up with 10 qualities that you're going to be remembered for. And yeah, sure, maybe you don't even care if somebody remembers you, blah, blah, blah. But it's still a helpful exercise. And here's what I mean. When I die, my goal is that my son and daughter read it and they say that their dad was incredibly loving. That their dad was incredibly kind. <laughs> they're actually behind the camera right now, so I know they're going to laugh about this one a little bit earlier because I wore a beanie cap to breakfast and I look like a conehead. But that ultimately their dad was very graceful. And that he was very compassionate. That he was incredibly genshai. Now, little teaching moment here. What does genshai mean? It means you never talk to someone, you never touch someone, and you never treat someone in a manner that might make them feel small. It's really like my favorite word. You could actually just have that as the one single word and you'd be pretty good to go. But that he was Genshai. It's a very important one. By you watching these videos, we want you to be happy. Now, a lot of people believe happiness is something that's external. You gotta quit telling yourself that lie. Happiness comes from a life of contribution. Happiness comes from a life of multiplying your gifts. Now, if you don't know what your gifts are, and this is not a sales pitch for me to be your coach, but literally, you need to send me an email and say, I need you to coach me on figuring out what my gifts are. Because you're never going to be as happy as you want to be, and you'll never have your best year ever if you're not multiplying your gifts every day. I want to be known as being empathetic. I want to be known as being peaceful. Ultimately, because of this gift of life I've been given, I want the world to be a better place. Now, I save this one for last. 
I want it to be said that John Donne was not lukewarm in life. I am here to tell you, and this may be even be like a bonus message. You're not meant to be lukewarm. Okay? You're not meant to live a life of quiet desperation. You're meant to exude passion. You're meant to multiply your gifts. You're meant to be happy. You're meant to be loving. You deserve all of those things, but you're not going to get them if you go through life being lukewarm. So that's my eulogy. Now, of course, it kind of reads out differently, but those are the 10 characteristics of how I'm going to be remembered. So I keep having year after year that's better, that's better, that's better, that's better, because I keep my eulogy on my desk. I look at it every morning. I touch it. I thank Matthew Kelly for teaching me that philosophy that who I become will be the most important thing in the world because I have not seen anything that does not represent that as being an incredibly truthful sentence. And then every month I sit down, I look at my eulogy, and I kind of grade myself on a scale of 1 to 10. Where did I do well on it? Where did I fall short on it? And I create new systems that help me live out my eulogy better. But this idea was taught to me. It was the man who wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, but I'm totally mental blanking on that one. Uh, but it's beginning with the end in mind. So a year from now, imagine I call you on the phone, which I really would, by the way, if you leave me your phone number. And I say, hey, how's it been going this last year? And you say, oh my God, it's been my best year ever. It's going to start with who you become. So what do you want your life to look like one year from now? And if I can help or Kaylee can help, please don't hesitate to reach out. You're two videos in on the magic button of being your greatest self. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you for watching our first Friday tip of our new series, Your Best Year Yet. I can't even begin to explain how beginning with the end in mind has changed my life. Thank you so much for watching and please hit like, subscribe, and share.